Okay. So um, the site is fundthepeopletoolkit.org. But as you'll see when you get, go to it, um, it's integrated with our main website, fundthepeople.org. So you open on a landing page with all these lovely people um, with three sort of key entry points into the toolkit. Show me funder content, show me nonprofit content, and show me the complete toolkit. We did this because we wanted to make sure that um, folks could get to customized pathways and find the materials that are most uh, applicable to, to their audience. Um, but there's, there's a lot here that's for everyone and usable in a variety of ways. So I'll start with what's in the whole toolkit. As you'll see, there are six um, categories of content, case making, how-to guides, field stories, building an inclusive workforce, discussion guides, and resource listings. Um, so again, we want to make sure that you have tools you need to make the case at your institution or with your colleagues in your networks. So these materials are really about how do you make a cogent argument um, that is compelling and um, applicable in your institutions. We hope that you'll take these tools and use them um, customize them to your context. So some things are actually available um, as, P, as a PDF, some are in uh, PowerPoint so that you can actually sh show, show them as slides at your shop. I'm, I, I don't have the time to go through every one um, here, uh, and you can do that on your own. Um, but we have quotes from leaders sort of that we hope you, you'll be able to pull for your own writing or your own presentations. We have a piece that uh, Yolanda really worked on about top reasons to invest in nonprofit talent, where we tried to synthesize the arguments and uh, the talent value chain below that tries to offer a logic model based on that used by business, um, but applied to the nonprofit sector about what's the return on investment uh, for investing in employees and how does it work. We have a couple documents about myths um, because we think one of the greatest barriers to investment in the nonprofit workforce is um, these mental models that we are holdovers from, you know, a long ago and that aren't really applicable and that actually hurt rather than help myths like the overhead myth um, or the martyrdom uh, culture and, and mentality. Uh, we included uh, the article that uh, we used to launch uh, Talent Philanthropy, which is the old name of Fund the People uh, here, because it kind of lays out the case, although it's a little old now. We provided an infographic. I'll just show you this. Um, and you'll see, you'll see that the content is locked. Um, But once you unlock it, you shouldn't have too much of a problem getting back in. See if this works. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay. So because I had already used it before. So you have some infographics here. Oh, sorry. I'll show it to you in the PDF. Well, it may, not, it may take too long. Uh, it's a beautiful infographic anyway. <laughs> and then we have a statistical um, analysis of how little money goes from foundations to nonprofit talent. So these materials are meant to provide a positive case, although they do sh enable you to talk about some of the negative, the problems when people don't get invested in as well. The how-to guides are an important practical 
um, resource um, will be adding to these for different audiences. But right now, the main materials are up top here, um, are focused on helping grant makers to step-by-step uh, -step figure out how to invest in the staff and the support systems for people in their grantee organizations. Again, we're trying to help people bake this in to the grant making they already do, not make it additional um, new grants necessarily or new money necessarily. There's a bunch of other great materials in here of particular interest to our, um, the people who um, tested out the site was the talent investment menu, which let's see if I can pull it up. which gives you sort of 10 buckets of um, types of investment in the nonprofit workforce that go beyond leadership and professional development, which are the things that tend to get talked about. So we think that's an important menu and an expansive way of thinking about um, what can be done to support the nonprofit workforce. I'll just uh, go back here. So I'll skip to equity and inclusion um, we don't have as much here yet, um, but we do have an agenda, a research agenda that we'll be adding to this section. Um, but here we have our statement that lays out both the rationale for why it's important to invest in equity and inclusion in our sector and in our workforce. It also lays out the research agenda that we're going to, um, proceed with in this area. So we'll be looking at different um, pain points for equity and inclusion in the sector and trying to provide some practical tools to help leaders and organizations address those. We also have a literature review and an annotated bibliography, which we help provide some kind of intellectual grounding for this. There are six field stories which uh, offer really great um, short um, and but still comprehensive kind of um, case studies of funders and nonprofits in the field and how they're working together to advance um, talent and leadership in, uh, in nonprofits. We have discussion guides that are meant to help you um, uh, hold conversations internally, either at foundations or nonprofits or between them about talent. And we think there's some important questions. In fact, at the beginning, these were at one point called ask the question, because we think that all of this talent investing can really get started if nonprofits and funders just ask some of these fundamental questions of each other. And lastly, the resource listings. Um, this is where there's materials from elsewhere in the field, but we start with a glossary of terms. Uh, we're actually making up some new words and some new phrases uh, because we felt like there weren't adequate, um, there wasn't adequate language um, in the field to talk about what we, about investing in people. So we felt like we needed to actually create some new terms. Uh, we could be wrong. That might be overblown, but uh, we, we've tried to craft some language and give that to you here, and that language is used throughout the site. Um, we also gave you a reading list of some of the key research and articles from the last 17 years or so. It's certainly in no way comprehensive, but is meant to give kind of a, to show that hopefully some evolution in thinking um, over the last almost two decades. And then finally, these resources from across the field um, offer links to case studies from other sources, um, to evaluations, and those are critical because um, a lot of the questions we get are, well, how do we evaluate these investments in nonprofit people? How do we show the value that's created or the impact on programs uh, when we invest in people. And these are evaluations that foundations have 
commissioned of their own funding and programs, and they show some pretty dramatic impact. We have articles on what the investment deficit looks like, that is the talent investment deficit, and then some articles from other sources on how to invest, how some grant makers and others have written about um, that at a practical level. So that is what's currently in the toolkit. I'm going to pause here and um, see if um, there's any, any questions or comments so far. I'm going to, um, you can either use the chat, um, let's see, or I'm going to see if I can unmute everyone. This is our first time using Zoom, so apologies for not being uh, proficient. Let's see, unmute all. Okay. Let's see. So anybody wanna pipe up with a question? Feel free to just speak now. Let's see. Okay. Uh, okay, I have a question on text from Holly. Let me mute everyone again. And I'll allow you to unmute yourself if you want to speak up. Um, but let me get to this question. So Holly says, looks really great. Appreciate the tour. Thanks, Holly. <laughs> Glad it looks good. Dissemination of the tour toolkit will happen how? How will you get take up? Yeah, that's a great question. We really just started. Um, the big push was to get it done and get it out into the world. Um, we are going to uh, go through networks of colleagues. So we're going to invite our advisory council and the institutions represented there to get it out through their networks. Um, we have partnerships with a variety of net nonprofit and funder networks. Um, so we'll be sending it out to those. Um, some groups have already invited us to potentially do webinars to funder associations, nonprofit associations. So we'll be getting it out really by leveraging the networks that are organic in the field um, rather than building our own um, uh, separate network. We'll also be producing more webinars and online programming based on the content. Uh, we'll be hoping to get some media um, coverage. We do have a podcast, the Unsettled podcast, which is a new nonprofit podcast coming out this month um, that's covering it. Um, so hopefully we'll get some, some earned media. We'll put on more programming online. We'll hope to get some webinars and um, coverage in the publications of our colleague networks. Um, we do want, <clears throat> excuse me, we do want to offer in-house and local trainings and briefings for funders and nonprofits. Um, and we are developing uh, workshops based on several of the items in the toolkit. Um, that will be we will be able to offer. So I think we'll use a variety of ways. I'll ask Yolanda to weigh in now because we actually have three webinars coming up over the next three months or so based on the field story. So Yolanda, you want to tell folks about that? And sure. Hi everybody. Glad glad you could join us this afternoon to learn all about the new Fund the People toolkit. So as Rusty said, we have uh, three. We have a few webinars coming up uh, the rest of, for the rest of 2017. Um, the first one will happen on October 10th, and it features the Bush Foundation, which is a Minnesota-based national, uh, sorry, Minnesota-based foundation that's been supporting uh, leadership, nonprofit talent, and community uh, leadership and development for for several years. That webinar will happen on October 10th uh, at 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern time. And then uh, in November, 
we will feature a field story webinar with the New York Community Trust, and they'll be talking about their uh, significant investment in the New York Community Trust Leadership Fellows Program uh, that they offer in partnership with Baruch College. And uh, the reason that uh, the trust wanted to launch this uh, fellowship program, which is entering its sixth cohort, is was to build uh, the pool of leaders of color in the nonprofit sector. And that webinar will happen on November 17th at 2 to 3 p.m. And then to close out uh, the year, we will have our last uh, webinar featuring the field story on the Community Memorial Foundation on December 12th at 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern time. And they'll be uh, talking about their investments in building the capacity of their nonprofit grantees and how investing in nonprofit talent is really part and parcel of their mission and vision for uh, strengthening uh, the sector in, in their part of the country, which is uh, in the 27 communities of Western, uh, in the Western Chicago suburbs. So we hope that you can join us for one or all of those upcoming webinars. Great. Thanks, Yolanda. And I, we should also say Yolanda is presenting at the National Center, National Forum on Family Philanthropy, which is put on by the National Center for Family Philanthropy um, in October. And then we'll be presenting along with the Kresge Foundation and the Holland Zealand Community Foundation at the Independent Sector Conference. Um, so those will be two opportunities to further uh, get the word out about what's available. And I think you're right, Holly, that a toolkit's only as good as, um, as, it, as if it gets used. So uh, we agree, we just knew we needed to have some of these resources up and available so that we could then um, sort of go from there. And so we're excited to, you know, actually have, actually have the materials available to everyone. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll, we'll continue to be on the road. <laughs> um, so, and any other, any other thoughts or questions or things? I know Yolanda, you were, um, wanted me to mention the, um, how to access the content. Do you wanna talk about that briefly? Sure, yeah, so, um... So the, when accessing the toolkit for the very first time, you, uh, you will, once you click on a link to access any of the tools, um, any of the items in the toolkit, you'll be asked for your contact information. And uh, this will actually take uh, just a few minutes. So once you, uh, once you share your email address and your, uh, and your name and your state, you'll, um, you'll be sent an email to confirm that, um, that it is you indeed that has um, provided this information. And once you do that, you'll be able to access the entire toolkit. And as long as you're accessing the toolkit from the same computer, you won't be asked to uh, fill in the, um, the, the, the pop-up box with your contact information. So once, once should, should do it for you, um, once, you're, um, you, once you've provided that information and you're on the same computer. Yeah, we were we were happy to figure this out, and we hope it works for you. And we look look to you to give us feedback as well if if there are weird glitches or problems that you have in accessing the site now or in the future. Please do um, please do let us know because we want to make sure we improve it. Um, we did have a, a a number of our advisors um, do user testing before, and we changed the site and the navigation significantly based on that feedback. So thanks to those of you who did that, if any of you are on this, and there are several of you uh, on this um, web chat now who are on the advisory council and can't tell you how much we appreciate your, your leadership and support. Um, so with that, we'll, we'll wrap it up here. Um, I wanna thank Yolanda for her tremendous leadership and project management making this site uh, and this project come to fruition over the last year, year and a half. Um, couldn't have done Thank it. Thank you. 
Couldn't have done it without you, obviously. Um, and also thanks to Isha Glover, who's on now, who's our new communications manager, who's really helped to make this launch happen in a beautiful way. Um, and we had terrific support from um, our graphic designer and web designer who are acknowledged on the site as well. And um, so thanks, thanks to Sean and Steven. And um, thanks to all of you. And we hope you use the site, share it with your networks um, as much as possible. Now we're trying to get as much, um, you know, buzz going, uh, but also usage. Um, so we do have a promotional toolkit or kit um, with materials. Um, if you want um, us to put a blog post up or to cross post on a blog that you work with, uh, or put it in your newsletter, any of those kinds of things Isha can help you with. Um, you can email her eglover at fundthepeople.org. Um, or email me or Yolanda and we'll route you to her um, or get you that kit. Um, so just respecting your time, we'll end here. Thank you so much and go fund the people. <laughs>